In the United States, it seems like plug-in hybrids are in kind of a weird position. They're the sort of half-breed, the sort of red-headed stepchild that few people seem to really love. Fans of full electrification say that this is a stopgap measure, it shouldn't even be attempted, and we should just all buy full electric vehicles. And then, of course, fans of gasoline vehicles only say you shouldn't even have a plug on anything. What is the logic behind a plug-in hybrid? How does it make sense? And why does really nothing with a plug quite make sense just yet? That's what I'm going to be talking about in this video. Plug-in hybrids are about gasoline mitigation, not gasoline elimination sort of in the same way that hybrid vehicles are. The important thing to remember about electric vehicles, hybrid vehicles, and plug-in hybrid vehicles is that they all use batteries. And batteries are at the moment a very hot commodity in the world. In fact, a lot of folks had sort of guessed that by now batteries would be becoming cheaper and cheaper every year. But in fact, thanks to demand, prices are going back up. Some folks are pinning their hopes on solid state battery technology, but solid state batteries aren't going to be any more available than regular lithium ion batteries. In fact, it's going to be quite some time until even the wildest projections put solid state batteries ahead of lithium batteries. And remember, solid state battery technology is still lithium based. So in a world where we have a limited number of resources, limited amount of battery manufacturing capability, honestly, nothing with a plug makes quite as much sense as a hybrid without a plug. Here's how it goes. The Kia Niro here is an excellent example because this is available as a full electric vehicle with 250 miles of range, a plug-in hybrid vehicle with 33 miles of electric range plus 500 miles of gasoline range, and a hybrid with about 550 miles of driving range. If we lived in a logical world where everybody could come together in a kumbaya moment and say, let's do something about emissions, let's do something about gasoline consumption, we would all be driving hybrids and nobody would have a plug just yet. Here's why. If, for instance, instead of this Kia Nero, we were driving a Kia Soul and drive it on my commute, say, 16,650 miles yearly. It's a 64 mile round trip commute. That Kia Soul would be consuming about 536 gallons of gasoline a year, and it's pretty efficient at 31 miles per gallon. But if we get a Nero hybrid instead, that consumption drops down to 339 gallons. A plug-in hybrid like this one, of course, will drop your personal gasoline consumption practically through the floor, just 83 gallons a year, based on my commute, my driving style with this, and being able to charge it at home and at the office on my daily commute. Obviously, if I bought a full electric Nero, that gasoline consumption would go all the way down to zero. But you'll notice there are significant compromises for adopting an EV. Just as every detractor out there says, you can, of course, fill your hybrid or your plug-in hybrid or your regular gasoline car in 30 seconds, I don't know, or five seconds, whatever they say it is, and any EV will take a little bit longer than that. And if you are the kind of person that wants to wake up on a random Wednesday and suddenly decide to drive across the country, obviously a plug-in hybrid, a hybrid, or a gasoline car is gonna be a lot more convenient. You could do it in an EV, but it's certainly gonna make that trip longer. But let's get out of that world and into a more logical, more rational world. Why would you not want to try and get everybody into an EV right away? Well, we simply cannot produce enough raw materials. We cannot produce the batteries enough in the world, etc. This is a very, very tough problem right now. But there are enough batteries currently in production to move a large portion of the North American car market over to a hybrid vehicle. And then, of course, the next stage rationally would be then to move them over to a plug-in hybrid. I think that ultimately the problem at play here is that many people tend to prefer cold turkey type solutions rather than harm reduction solutions when we've identified a problem. And I'm just as guilty of this as the next person. If you've suddenly decided that carbs are bad, you don't want to reduce the carbs, you want to stop the carbs, you want to stop smoking, you want to stop drinking, you want to stop doing drugs. Well, yeah, stop doing drugs. But the rest of it, maybe sometimes moderation is the better answer immediately and then you can reduce that down to cold turkey over time. And that's exactly what's going on with hybrid and plug-in hybrid vehicles with a twist where the entire world needs to move along because you driving an electric vehicle is not saving the planet. You need to get everybody else to start reducing their consumption. That might save the planet. And this is a really good example here. So let's take a look at what would happen if you got one person to buy a Kia Niro EV instead of a Soul ICE vehicle. You'd save 536 gallons a year. Now, I have my little cheat sheet here so I get the numbers all right. If instead of that one Kia Niro EV that I could buy myself, if I got six people to buy a plug-in hybrid instead, well then the world would be saving 2,718 gallons of gasoline a year 
even though people would still be burning some gasoline. On my daily commute, again, 83 gallons a year, but that's a heck of a lot better than 536. It's not cold turkey, but it's the next best thing. But you know what's even better? Is actually consuming more gasoline personally and less as a community. If instead of just six plug-in hybrids, you were to build 60 hybrid Neros, then guess what the reduction would be? Well, you don't have to guess, I have it here. 11,820 gallons is what you would save moving 60 people from a Kia Soul into a Kia Nero hybrid. And the numbers are basically the same regardless of the kind of hybrid or plug-in hybrid that we're driving here. If you're taking a look at a Prius or a Prius Prime, you get more people to buy a Prius, you've actually done better than having a limited number of people buy a Prius Prime. Ditto a RAV4 Prime, ditto absolutely every EV that is super bonkers hot on the market right now. In a pipe dream world where we could have a kumbaya moment and realize that collectively we could have a greater impact on consumption, on emissions, on energy independence, whatever you want to call this, then moving everybody over to a hybrid vehicle first is absolutely essential because that's the low hanging fruit. Hybridization is not as expensive as full electrification. It's not as expensive as plug-in hybridization, and the cost numbers bear that out. This plug-in hybrid is about $5,000 more expensive than the regular hybrid, but it's $6,000 less than the EV version of the Nero. And again, same limited number of resources, the one that's gonna have the bigger impact would actually be the least expensive option. Now clearly no version of the Nero is gonna be as much fun as some of the bonkers EVs that we see on sale in 2023. Insert whatever Tesla Plaid model we're talking about into this sentence or Kia's own EV6 GT, which is certainly a lot sexier, a lot hotter, and way faster than this Kia Nero. But is it actually better for the world, better for the environment, better for your community than simply driving the hybrid? The data says at this point in time, the answer is no. You might drive your personal consumption down to zero, but in a world where resources are limited, buying zero may actually hamper progress towards everybody collectively reducing their emissions more. So this is kind of an off topic thing. Let me know what you think about this down there in the comments section below. If I were able to instantly change legislation in the United States, I would continue ratcheting up fuel economy regulations on everything out there because that would force hybridization more rapidly. If next year we had to have higher fuel economy in every segment, and then a year after that, higher fuel economy in every segment either, you can be darn well sure that engine sizes would decrease, hybrid systems would start being found under the hood, and that's really what's gonna be required to move things along to the next step. Once you're already producing batteries and you're already producing electric motors, that infrastructure can then be adapted to produce the next phase, which would be plug-in hybrids. Then you start saying, well, now vehicles need to have some minimum amount of electric range as a plug-in hybrid like this, along with lower emissions and higher economy. And then once you've hit that milestone, then you could go on into full electrification. Anyway, thanks for coming for my TED Talk. Let me know what you think about all that down there in the comment section. And uh, let me know if there are any other inconvenient truths that you might want to discuss on the channel as well. Uh, cost of charging electric vehicles, that might be coming up in a future episode because fun, interesting twist. If you want to charge this puppy off of 100% renewable energy in California from PG&E, you're going to be paying actually a little bit more to operate this than you would $5 a gallon gasoline in the regular hybrid model. See all of you later.